For over 25 years, Universal Orlando has celebrated Mardi Gras, paying tribute to the rich history and culture of New Orleans and carnival celebrations around the world with its epic parade, fan favorite concerts, and delicious food. However, the event has a curious history of its own, with origins that extend beyond the bounds of the Orlando Resort. So with this video, we're going to dig into some of that real world history, track the evolution of Mardi Gras at the parks, and take a deep dive into the story behind some of the event's most signature offerings. So put on those dancing shoes and throw on those beads as we take a look at the history behind Universal's Mardi Gras. Now, before we talk about anything involving Universal Orlando and their version of Mardi Gras, I think it's most important to define what Mardi Gras is in the first place, and spoiler alert, it goes back quite a ways. Dating back to different pagan fertility celebrations such as the Roman Saturnalia and Lupercalia, the celebration we now know as Mardi Gras was the result of Christian religious leaders attempting to merge these ancient traditions with their faith. These fertility celebrations were now incorporated as a prelude to Lent, the 40-day period of fasting before Easter Sunday. The French took great interest in the celebration, initially calling it Boeuf Gras, Boeuf Gras? Boeuf Gras. Boeuf Gras, which translates to fatted calf or fatted beef, signaling consumption before the fast. However, due to the final day of the festival falling on the day before Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, the name was changed to Fat Tuesday, aka Mardi Gras. With French colonization of land in North America in 1699, Mardi Gras also came over into what's now known as the United States, and by the 1730s, it was celebrated pretty openly in the newly established New Orleans, officially founded in 1718. And since then, Mardi Gras has only grown in popularity with different cultural celebrations across the world. Universal's version focuses on the New Orleans traditions, with dazzling costumes and elaborate parades lining the streets, complemented by music and food that pays tribute to the culture of New Orleans. Now that's all well and good, but this is a Universal video. Where does Universal come into play? Well, my friends, you know what channel you're watching, so you should know that all roads lead to Halloween Horror Nights. Not exactly, but Universal did pull from the success of their signature Halloween party for what will become their Mardi Gras celebration. In 1991, Universal took a big swing and developed their answer to Walt Disney World's Very Merry Christmas Party by creating Fright Nights. The event, which ran for three nights in October of 1991, was a big success, with its emphasis on unique entertainment compared to the normal park during the day. Into the 90s, and with a bit of a name change, Halloween Horror Nights began to generate quite a bit of buzz and extra cash for the budding theme park, so this led them to really seek another celebration, specifically for the slower season earlier in the year. While not singularly responsible for the creation of Mardi Gras, both events pull inspiration from each other, with HHN incorporating Mardi Gras themed houses and even a full-scale parade, God I wish, and Mardi Gras occasionally reusing props from HHN haunted houses. And if you're at all interested in hearing more about those Mardi Gras and Louisiana themed houses, friend of the channel Nerd Squish has a whole video diving into the history of Louisiana at HHN, so go check that out because she does a great job diving into that history. Anyways, while Universal had a Mardi Gras celebration cooking, they weren't the first to think up this idea in Central Florida. As a few months before the first Fright Nights in 1991, Disney was cooking up their own Mardi Party in the Pleasure Island section of Downtown Disney, now known as Disney. Springs. See, Disney had a very similar thought process as Universal, seeking the Mardi Gras season as the perfect time to launch an event, as it was typically slower at Walt Disney World at that time. So they transformed an area with a previously established party atmosphere into one that would host various Mardi Gras festivities. By 1995, Mardi Gras at Walt Disney World had been going on for half a decade. However, Universal was looking to make something bigger and crazier than anything Disney was offering. From extending the celebration to over a month to feature Featuring an extremely elaborate parade and transforming the backlot section of the park into a place to taste various treats and listen to a variety of music, Universal's inaugural Mardi Gras celebration had it all, becoming a huge success pretty much right off the jump. Now, if you can't tell by the footage I'm showing on the screen, the main attraction of Universal's Mardi Gras was, of course, the parade, which carries quite a bit of interesting history in itself. 
While Mardi Gras has its roots in the traditions of old, it wouldn't be until the 1850s that the event saw its first formal parade, presented by the Mystic Crew of Comus. For those who don't know, a crew is essentially an organization that sets up the floats for the Mardi Gras parade, and generally helps to prepare the event. And the second Mardi Gras parade in 1870, hosted by the Twelfth Night Revelers, saw the debut of the first throw, something very familiar to those who have been to Universal's event and has caught one of the three million beads thrown into the crowd annually. These crews started as a way for individuals to band together and stage the celebration, but eventually evolved into something of a legitimate industry, specifically in the case of Kern Studios, a company founded in 1932 by Roy Kern and his son Blaine, who were both artists in New Orleans before working on floats for Mardi Gras. Blaine would gather different artistic ideas from across the world and eventually create his own world, Mardi Gras world to be exact. A tourist destination where guests can look into the process behind making these intricate floats. And since the original 15 float lineup in 1995, Kern Studios has developed all the floats for Universal's Mardi Gras, giving the parade the reputation of being the closest thing to a true Mardi Gras parade without visiting New Orleans itself. When it came to Universal's Mardi Gras, the years that followed 1995 only brought more expansion, with extended event dates, bigger concert acts, and just generally more of what made the event so special in the first place. Some notable changes into the 2000s involved a parade themed to Americana in 2002, an all-new parade unit in 2005, and the removal of the backlot area in 2009, which made way for the Universal Music Plaza stage we all know now. The 2010s continued the pattern of continuous expansion with new floats being added year by year and ever-changing parade themes. However, the biggest change for the event would come in 2020 for the event's 25th anniversary celebration. For one, this would mark the debut of a brand new event offering, the first non-HHM-based tribute store to come to the park. There was also the effort to diversify the food offerings, featuring dishes from Brazil, Germany, Trinidad, and Tobago. However, the event, which began on February 1st, 2020, would unfortunately get cut short due to COVID, which shut down the parks in mid-March. With the park shutting down and many unique restrictions in place when it came to events in 2020, I'm looking at you, HHN Light, 2021 saw a modified version of Mardi Gras, with no formal parades or concerts, but instead stationary floats set up around the park with performance keeping the spirit alive. The tribute store would also return in 2021, but rather than paying tribute to the event through an atmospheric bayou theme, they would incorporate the real-world history of 1920s jazz parlors and infamous pirates like John Lafitte into the highly themed store environment. Universal also leaned really heavily into the global cuisine idea in 2021, featuring flavors of Carnival that elevated Mardi Gras to being Universal's worldwide food festival, something familiar to the other major theme parks in Orlando. Since 2022, we've seen the event go back to its original glory, going even deeper into diverse food options and clever theming to pay tribute to the world-famous celebration. And that brings us to right now. Mardi Gras 2024 is here, and while it keeps a lot of these same things that we know and love from this event in the past, there are quite a few additions that shake things up for this year. For one, we do have an all new parade on an all new route, themed to elements like fire, water, and wind, as well as the sun and the moon. Each of these new parade floats are incredibly detailed, no surprises there, but they all contain extra special smoke or fire effects that make them all the more exciting. The food is as diverse as ever, as the flavor of Carnival spread to 18 different booths, from South America to Asia, right back to New Orleans. This year also marks the debut of a new character seen all over the event this year, seemingly a play on the Baron Samity figure from New Orleans folklore. From a dynamic presence on merch to the tribute store and even an appearance at the top of the parade, this guy is everywhere, making me think he could become a new Mardi Gras icon in the coming years. And speaking of the tribute store, it has to be the standout item for me this year. Themed to a haunted steamboat, it combines the eerie elegance of New Orleans from previous tribute stores with the serene stillness of the bayou with a supernatural twist. And if you want to see a more atmospheric, in-depth tour of that, I'll link a video I just made in the cards. Go check it out. I'm really proud of this one. But regardless, as seen by the emphasis on new characters, dining, and entertainment, Mardi Gras at Universal has changed quite a bit since the 
the early days of Universal Studios Florida, and I think it's only up from here. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this look back into the history of Mardi Gras both inside and outside of Universal. If you like this video, like theme park history, current events, and things to come, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing, it would truly mean a lot. Anyways, I've been talking too long, I gotta go practice my bead catching because I'm a bit rusty, so I want to thank you all for watching again, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care, everybody.